Hi, I'm Alan of Pineapple DIY, and this is how I created these little wooden planters. I started out with pine common board, which I bought at the local Home Depot for around $5. The measurements were four inches by one inch by 10 feet, but in actuality, it was more like 3.5 inches by three fourths of an inch thickness. The next step was to chop the boards down to square blocks. I used the miter saw with a backstop so that all the pieces would end up being the same and I did not have to remeasure after every cut. I would always recommend doing this for cutting many pieces with the same measurement. Not all the blocks had pretty faces, so I tried to hide the knots and defects within the sections that would be glued. I also wanted to mark any section that would end up having glue on it so I knew that the glue was going on the right face. For me, gluing usually ends up being the funnest part of the project because it's a, it's a, I don't know if it's a texture thing and I'm a texture person, but I really like it. And I tried to get the glue on the whole surface of the board that I'm gluing so that it creates a tight bond between the, the sandwiched pieces. I chose tight bond not for any particular reason, but I do like the flavor. Throwback to elementary school. After the glue is applied to all the internal surfaces, you have to clamp it together to hold it while it sets. And uh, I used one of the pieces that I wasn't using to kind of square it out as I clamped it. This makes it a lot easier later on and reduces the amount of sanding that you have to do. After the glue dried, which took roughly about an hour, I took them off the clamps and used a scraper to scrape off all the runout of the glue that was uh, pressed between the blocks. Before I cut the blocks into their final shapes, I drew some reference lines on the blocks so I have something to go off of while cutting. For the first block, I wanted to do a freehand shape and it ended up being very nice. I wanted to also use my new pool saw which I got and new tools are always a good thing. For the rest of the blocks, however, I just used the miter saw to get them to their final shape. It definitely saved my hands some cramping. As you can see now, there are only four blocks from the original six. Let's just say that while sawing, one of the blocks wouldn't hold a plant and the other block wouldn't hold together. You'd think woodworking would be all these quick, sexy cuts, but it ends up being mostly sanding, which took up most of the time in this project. I worked my way down from a 40 to an 80 to a 120 to a 220 grit sandpaper as I went just to get the nicer finished surface. 
The next step is to bore the holes that the plants actually go in. For next time, one thing I definitely change is to use a bigger bit. I ended up using a one and one fourth of an inch spade bit, but I really needed a bigger bit and probably a Forstner bit, which gives me a chance to buy new tools. A Forstner bit just makes cleaner holes than the spade bit, which caused a lot of tear out. I used tongue oil for the finish for this project because I wanted to maintain the light color of the original wood and also apply like a wet sheen to the finished product. I ended up using around three coats. The final step was to plant the succulents into the planters and you can see here why I would probably go with a bigger hole for the plants for next time, but it ended up being a snug fit. Here you can see the finished product. I really like the way they turned out. This is my first video and more projects will come out soon. Check them out on my YouTube channel, Pineapple DIY. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button and subscribe for more projects. Big thanks to my dad for letting me borrow his garage and tools to finish this project and to my friend Adi for making this sick beat that you hear behind the video and also Eddie for designing the Pineapple Head logo for my channel.